Hi friends, welcome to episode five of Half to Rainbow. Today we are going to talk about bleaching your roots at home and how to create an ombre using semi-permanent hair dye. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Ivy and I create art and lifestyle content on this channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and join our little family. Hit the bell so you get notified whenever new content comes out. Right now, I'm in the process of making a clay pins video. So if you're interested in arts and craft, please make sure you join us. I'll also have some upcoming home decor videos because I just moved into my new home. And speaking of which, welcome to my new space. If you guys remember my campaign video that I did for my shop a couple months ago, this is the backdrop from that shoot and I'm just trying to find a way to use it in my regular videos. So hopefully you like this. Back to today. If you've been following it along on this little series, then you know that I highly recommend bleaching your hair at a salon. But let's say you've already gone to the salon and you got a full head of platinum blonde hair. But your roots are growing out and you need someone to touch it up for you, but you don't want to go to the salon again because you want to save some money. Then this is the right video for you. We're going to talk all about that today. So bleaching your roots at home. The bleach I use is the quick blue bleach. There's no particular reason why I use it. I just like that it comes in a big tub. I've also used the Blonde Me and Color Charm. I haven't really noticed a huge difference with any of those, but because the first time I had gone to purchase bleach, Quick Blue was the one I had purchased first and I had purchased such a big tub of it, which is why I tend to use it more often than not. Uh, I have heard really good reviews about the Blonde Me though, so if you want to spend a little bit more to get something that might potentially have a better result, then maybe you want to check that out. So if you're bleaching your hair at home, what you're going to need is bleach and developer. I could do a whole other video on developer, but what you have to know about developers are that the higher the volume of developer, the more your hair cuticle opens and the more your hair lightens. So developer is used whenever you're bleaching your hair or whenever you're using permanent hair dye. And that allows the dyes to really soak into your hair because the cuticles are open and it is also important to be aware that the higher the volume, the more damage that your hair is going to have. So you can either do lower volume for more times, or you could do higher volume for less times to reach your ideal result. What I tend to do, because my hair is extremely dark, um, it is just like black. What I tend to do for myself, because my hair is so dark, um, I tend to use the 30 volume developer for the first round of bleach and for the second round of bleach, I will go lower with 20 volume. I know some people might think that this is kind of counterproductive because it's not really lightening your hair faster, but although my hair is very strong and can take a lot of processing, I don't want to go too far too soon. That way I feel like I am limiting the damage that I am doing to my hair. For my black hair, what I need to do is usually three rounds of bleach and one round of toner. The reason why I do three rounds of bleach is because once the bleach dries, it is no longer processing. So about 45 minutes to an hour in, you're going to have to rinse out your hair and start over. Please be aware that it is quite a long process. If you have a lot of hair, just the painting process, waiting for it to process, washing your hair, drying your hair, that can probably take a total of two to three hours. So if you're doing three rounds of bleach like me and a round of toner, that could potentially take all day, I would say six to nine hours. So sometimes what I would do is I would split it up into two days and do it that way.
So apart from the bleach and developer, what you'll also need is a brush and a plastic tub. You can get these at most hair supply stores and they come in all types of varieties. I've got another one in black. It's got those teeth here, which is really great for when you're trying to get any dye or bleach off of your brush and back into the bowl. But I love having more than one around that way when I'm mixing colors for my ombre, then I could have them both ready. <laughs> So I've got two brushes on hand, this bigger brush, and I also have the smaller brush with a comb. I actually hardly ever use this comb because I feel like it tends to get things all over the place. But I do like that this brush is a little bit smaller, so sometimes it's easier for me to get into certain areas, or if I'm doing colors, then I could do a little bit more detail. I'm not actually going to be bleaching my hair today because what? as I have mentioned, I do not recommend bleaching your hair at home unless it is just the roots. And when I say just the roots, I mean anywhere from one centimeter to three centimeters. Um, anything beyond that, I think you should go to a salon because you're going to experience some banding and that's not gonna be fun. I have my own reasons for why I'm not bleaching my hair right now. If you're interested in that, please leave me a comment down below and I will talk all about it. Right now, I'm going to tell you about the techniques that I've been using for the past decade. Once you've got your bleach and your developer, then what you're going to do is you're going to mix it. And because your bleach is a powder, you're not going to want to stir really quickly right away. Similar to how if you were making pancakes, you wouldn't want to like just go wild because the flour would just get everywhere. Likewise, you do not want the bleach to get all over your washroom, so please stir slowly. What I like to do is go in this like circular motion and kind of like stab it into the developer. And then once it's more or less mixed, you can start stirring it regularly and you're going to want to make sure that this is very well combined before beginning. And for the exact measurements, you should check the labels on your bleach. That should tell you exactly how much developer you need. The consistency you're going for though is more or less like a yogurt. Just make sure that everything is very well mixed and that there are no little bits of dry bleach in your tub. So when you're ready to begin, most tutorials will tell you to split your hair into quadrants. So down the middle and then down the middle this way. It works, but I find that if you're just doing your own hair, it's much easier to, to just split it wherever you split your hair, down the middle or slightly to the side and work from there. So what I do then is I take my brush and I take my bleach and I start at the hairline and I make sure that my roots are evenly coated with bleach for moving forward. And once I'm ready to move forward, what I do is I take the pointy end of the comb and I push into my hair about half a centimeter to lift this section up and I flop it to the other side and I do the same thing to both sides because although you might think you have enough bleach on your hair from just that one hit it's good to hit it on both the front and the back so I'll do that on this side first just so that this initial strand is coated and then I tend to start moving over here to get all of the hair on this side. The reason why I do that is because there's more hair on this side, which means that it'll take longer to process and there's less hair on this side, so I can usually tackle it quicker, but um, really no huge difference. You want to work relatively quick no matter what method or what sections you're going for because the moment the bleach hits your hair, it's going to start processing. So if you spend too much time on one side and you leave the other, then one side will be lighter than the other. But the great thing about having darker hair and having to do it multiple times is that the first time you can start with the left and the second time you can start with the right to balance it out. I do find that because I do start from the top of my head rather than the bottom, on the back of my hair or the very bottom of my hair tends to be a bit darker. It's not a huge issue to me, so I don't really care too much about it. But paint it on both sides 
and keep flipping it. Because of the pastiness of the bleach, your hair's not really going to move around too much. But once there's too much hair on one side, what you could do to get it out of your face is you can get a claw clip or any other plastic clip to clip your hair out of the way. You're not going to want to use a metal clip because that will interact with the bleach. What I do want to note is that as you are painting, it's really easy to miss the back of your head. So make sure that you are painting all the way to the back. And when you are picking up hair, that you are going all the way to the back of your head and separating it like that. If there are sections that you miss, you will be able to catch it in the end because once all of this hair is flipped over to this side, then you'll be able to kind of pull this out and see that it hasn't yet been touched with bleach. And from then on, you can just paint it, flip it over to one side and continue. All right. <laughs> Now that I look like a crazy person. That's the gist of how I bleach my hair at home. So once I have my entire head covered, I leave it for about 45 minutes or until the bleach feels dry. Um, it is super helpful to have a helper. If you have a helper, there is a much less chance of you missing any spots in the back, which I tend to do quite often. Um, it does get easier over time and you do miss less spots over time, but it's really annoying when you have a patch of black hair in the sea of blonde hair. But if you can't find a helper, what you could do is use a bunch of mirrors and try to see the back of your head and make sure that nothing is being missed. What really helps too when you're painting your hair with either dye or bleach is to hold it taut. That way you can actually feel which parts of your hair you are painting on and it, the tension also gives you an even surface to work with. When you're rinsing out your hair, make sure that you do a really good job to get all of the bleach out. If you haven't seen my hair hacks video, please make sure you protect your skin at all times while you are bleaching your hair. So that means gloves and anything for your neck or your face. Um, I highly, highly recommend watching that video because I do share a lot of tips and tricks about how you can do that. But for when you are in the shower, please be aware that it is still important to protect your skin. Um, try to wash your hair in a way so that not all of the bleach is being washed onto your body because that's just not good. When you come out of the shower, make sure you dry your hair completely. And from there you can inspect the lightness of your hair. If you're going for a platinum blonde like I usually do, then you want to make sure that your hair is a very, very pale yellow like this one. If it is not at that level yet, what you can do is to repeat this whole process again until you get there. Of course, everyone's hair texture is different, so make sure that your hair is not too damaged before moving forward. You can usually check by seeing whether the texture of your hair has changed. If it is really damaged, then it almost gets kind of stretchy and like just weird. When your hair is at this level, what I usually do then is I go in with a round of toner. The toner I use is Wella's Color Charm T18, and that usually gives me a silvery blonde color, which I really like. And it's a really good starting point for doing any rainbow colors like pink, blue, purple, or anything like that. And now to apply that, I use the brush to mix the mixture according to the package instructions. And then I either slop it on with the brush or I take it in my gloves and I just rub it into my hair. I find that that's just much quicker and easier. And then you just leave it on for as long as the package tells you to leave it on for. And with that out of the way, your hair is now ready for any color of the rainbow. The next thing I'm going to talk about with you is how to ombre your hair at home. If any of you have missed my last hair video, that was the video where I talked about all of the colors that I have ever dyed my hair before, what recipes I used, how long those colors lasted, 
what brands I like, all of that good stuff. If you haven't seen that yet, what you'll notice is I tend to have two to three mixtures for dyeing my hair because I like having darker colors on top and lighter colors on the bottom or just simply having two different colors at the same time because it's more fun that way. And what I usually do is I have one color in one tub and I have the other color in the other tub. Um, for sake of demonstration purposes, let's just say that this tub is the darker color. I do always start with the darker color. My painting process is exactly the same as when I bleach my hair. So I separate my hair where I usually part it and I paint the top, flip it over and paint the bottom. And to do the ombre effect, I will paint until where I want the colors to stop roughly. And instead of just stopping my brush, do this sweeping motion. Once I get through my whole head, everything has been touched with the darker color, then I come in with the lighter color. And with this, it's a little bit more difficult to hold my hair taut because there's nothing to hold when I'm at the bottom but I do paint it on both sides like this and then what I'll do is I'll take some color with my hand and I'll rub it in like that and usually with that that's all it takes to get ombre hair it sounds so simple you know what it really is um, usually with that I leave it on for half an hour or longer since semi-permanent hair dyes don't damage your hair and I do mix them with conditioner it almost acts as a hair mask to replenish my recently bleached hair and I really love the way it smells the way it feels after I do my hair like that so if you do decide to leave the dye on your hair for longer periods of time what you could do is to use a you could use a shower cap to hold everything in. What I tend to do is to pick up my hair in sort of a ponytail and put the ends in first. That way it's not getting all mixed up with the hair on top. The other thing you could do is of course use a bag. But <laughs> the other really great thing about semi-permanent hair dyes apart from the nourishing conditioning aspects of it and how great it smells is that you can keep it for future use. So if you mixed a color that you like and you have too much of it, you can actually put it into a plastic container and save it for next time. So for the longest time when I had this hair, I had saved up my dark blue hair dye into this. This was an old hair mask container that I kept and it looks almost black, but it's actually a really dark blue. So rather than having to mix new colors every time, I do usually go into my little collection and start mixing with that. And the really great thing about that is I already have the dark color for the top part. And if I want to have a lighter version of it for the bottom half, what I could do is to mix more conditioner into that mix and it will become a lighter version of whatever's on top. I recently was hanging out with my friend Etsuko, the photographer. I'm sure if you're a regular on this channel, you would have heard tons of things about her. We wanted to do a shoot where my hair wasn't too bright in color. So I wanted to do a toned down version of what I usually have. And to do that, I mixed my usual mix along with more pink and a lot more conditioner to do a light wash of the regular blue tone that I have. And to keep these colors around, I usually just have these old takeout containers. And that pretty much sums it up for ombreing your hair at home. I've also got one more hair video coming up in this series to wrap everything up. And that is my hair care routine video where I will also be sharing how to prevent your hair colors from fading too quickly. And like I said earlier, I am making some art videos, some clay pin tutorials, and more. If you're interested in any of that, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to join our little family. And that's all for me today. I hope all of you are well and happy. I'll see you all very soon.